Good morning, Fellowship. Welcome. We're glad you're here for week two of Fellowship in Quarantine. Um, we are here in the lobby of Fellowship. We're going to encourage you guys just to stay here and hang out with us this week. Um, so I hope you guys are all comfortable in your pajamas and whatever else, sitting on your couch listening to us or watching us. We have some encouraging things coming up for you guys a little bit later on in our service, I guess you'd call it. So um, we hope you guys are all doing okay. Um, you're all not going completely crazy um, being stuck at home, especially now with this kind of shelter in place order that's come down. So um, I just want to tell you a little bit about just kind of what's been going on with my family because we want to be able to pray for you guys too. So um, as you guys know, my family is pretty multicultural. We're kind of all over the place. Um, my, my parents are in England um, and they've pretty much been told that they're probably in shelter in place for the next three to four months. So please pray for my mom because she is not looking forward to that and pray for my dad that she doesn't kill him in the process. Um, also, my brother and his wife and three kids just came back from Ethiopia, and so we're praising God that they were able to actually get a flight and get themselves back to Dublin, so they're back home again, which is great, so praise God for that. If you guys have anything going on, I know you guys have family as well like we do, and there's stuff going on with your family. Some of you have elderly grandparents or parents. Um, if we can pray for those people, please shoot us an email, let us know about that. Um, but we are glad you guys are here with us. If you're visiting with us this morning, we're especially glad you chose to come and kind of check us out. Um, so let's, uh, just, let's just continue on with our worship.
Hey, Fellowship. Uh, it's great to be with you this morning. And uh, so I'm going to give you a, a little bit of update on me. And then we're going to transition into uh, a couple of announcements. So uh, I'm working from home now. Uh, Texas A&M University at Texarkana has put all their classes online for the rest of the semester. So uh, I'm working from home. Uh, my daughter Julie and her children have been down to visit for spring break. They stayed an extra week and they're headed back uh, to Wisconsin uh, to be uh, back in the home. So uh, you can pray for their safety as they travel. And uh, otherwise, we're doing fine trying to keep things going uh, at the Revis House. Um, I want to mention to you again that uh, all of our regular ministries, of course, have gone as online as we can make them. Uh, we're recording this service this, uh, for Sunday, and we are uh, counting on Richard to do a, a Wednesday night Zoom meeting. Uh, the community groups are meeting also on, on Sunday mornings with the Zoom, and so we invite you to be part of that uh, each week uh, if you can. And uh, so those things are important. The other thing that's important is uh, the expenses of the church are continuing. And so I want to uh, remind you that uh, you can give uh, online. There's a, you can text in an amount to 84321 uh, for, to get enrolled in the new online giving uh, plan that we've got. We've also got the link on the homepage of the church website. You can also mail a check in uh, if you'd like. And uh, I'm praying that God will bless you as you're faithful in your giving uh, to our ministry. Uh, I'm going to now uh, transition into uh, just leading us in prayer. So if you would, just pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for being able to uh, do this service online. Thank you for the, the technology and uh, the means to be able to get this accomplished. Father, I pray for protection for us. I pray that you would just uh, keep the people in Texarkana calm, that you would uh, protect us from this virus. Lord, I pray that you'd find, uh, show us ways that we can uh, minister to one another and encourage one another. And uh, Father, I also pray that you would be with Richard as he delivers our message today. Uh, Lord, I just ask that you would encourage our hearts through your Holy Spirit. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks. Let's hear from Richard. Hey, Fellowship, it is so good of you to join us. Uh, we so appreciate you clicking in and uh, spending this time in worship together. And if you're not part of our church, uh, we just are so uh, honored that you chose to worship with us this morning. Okay, this is our third Sunday to not be able to meet together. Of course, the first Sunday was because of the water main, but we're now 15 days into this situation. You know, and here's the thing I've noticed is we all seem to have gotten used to this new situation. We figured out, okay, I've got to work from home. I've got to work remotely. Uh, there's a new normal, but I've adjusted to it. A new way to get groceries, a new way to educate my kids, a new way to connect with the people that I really want to connect with. And I've kind of gotten used to it. I don't like it. It's not my preferred method. I'd much rather do it this way, but I can do it this new way. And then now for us here in Texarkana, now they've just put in a new thing, shelter in place. What in the world does that mean? Now we've got to come up with a new normal. You know, it's tough enough hearing all the stuff that's out there, the fear, the panic, and, and recognizing that as the people of God, we don't want to be people that are people of fear. We want to be people of faith. We don't want to fear anything except God himself. And so we're already putting a lot of energy into to maintaining our, our trust in God and our faith in God and not being fearful people. But at the same time, we all got to adjust to these new normals. Had to adjust to this. Had to adjust to that. Had to adjust this other thing. And all of that together takes a lot of energy and it creates a lot of frustration, don't you think? Anyone out there frustrated? I know from time to time I'm pretty frustrated. How do you maintain a godly attitude in the midst of all this change? It's tough enough to, to continue to have faith in God, to not be fearful, to not be panicking, but now the situation changes every day. It's like now I've got to adjust my lifestyle. I have a way that I like to do life, but now I've got to do it a different way. 
I mean, does the Bible have any uh, information for us? You know, I think it does. Here's the question I want us to think about. How do we as children of God adjust to this new normal and do it with a good attitude and a healthy perspective on the future? You know, I think when you look at the Apostle Paul, we find some answers. We find some instructions on just how he handled it. Now, when you read through the book of Acts, you see Paul go into all sorts of places. I mean, he was a man on the move. He was in Philippi. He was in Colossae. He was in Thessalonica. I mean, the guy loved to travel. Now, sure, he was out there preaching the gospel, compelling people to trust Christ, planting churches. But, you know, you got to admit, the guy liked to travel. He, he, if he didn't, wasn't an evangelist, he probably would have been some sort of road roy or a traveling salesman. I mean, he liked sleeping in different beds every night. You know, he even it kind of admitted that. You know, over in Romans 15, the end of the book of Romans, he's writing to the people of Rome, telling him, hey, I want to come and visit you, but let me just tell you a little bit about my DNA. He says, I make it my ambition to preach the gospel, not where Christ has already been named, lest I build on someone else's foundation, but what really gets me up in the morning, what keeps me up late at night, is to go preach to those who have never been told about Christ. I mean, he liked to travel. He was a mover. He was a shaker. That was his preferred mode of operation. But you know, I was referring to the book of Acts, and I talked about how he's moving all over the place. Where is he at the very end of the book of Acts? Well, you probably remember, he was arrested, he's tried, he's taken all the way to Rome, and he's awaiting trial before Caesar. And where does he land at the very book of, at the end of uh, the book of Acts? The last two verses read this. It says, Paul lived there in Rome for two whole years at his own expense. And he was welcoming any and all who would come. And he was proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ to, with all boldness and without hindrance. Now, this guy's a mover. He's a shaker. He likes to travel. And he is stuck in a new situation. He is in shelter in place in Rome and rather than him going to people and telling them about Christ, they're having to come to him. Rather than him traveling to city, to city, to city, he's having to write a letter to this city, to that city. I mean, sure, he is doing what God put him on the planet to do, to tell people about Jesus Christ, but he's not getting to do it in the way he really liked to do it. He liked traveling. He liked the road. He liked this lifestyle, sitting in one place, doing the same thing day in, day out. That was not his preferred mode of operation. And yet here, that's where God put him. And I think Paul, Luke, who wrote the book of Acts, who was a very close friend of the Apostle Paul, I mean, look at how he writes it. He said, this happened for two whole years. Well, that kind of raises a question. How did Paul do in this new normal? Here Paul is sheltered in place, can't travel, can't go anywhere, and in worse, he had to pay his own expenses. Remember it said he lived there for two whole years at his own expense. How do you handle it? Was he getting frustrated? Was he getting irritated? Was he getting a little bitter? How do you handle it? Well, you know, to answer that question, we go over to the book of Philippians. See, during those two years, one of the things the Apostle Paul did was he wrote a letter to the people in Ephesus. That's the book of Ephesians. He wrote a letter to the people in Colossae. That's the book of Colossians. He wrote a personal letter to a guy named Philemon. And he also wrote a letter to the people of Philippi. That's the book of Philippians. And the thing that really prompted him to write the letter to the Philippians is they had sent him some money. He had to pay his own expenses. He had to buy his rent, 
to pay for his rent. He had to buy his own groceries. Anything and everything he needed, he had, it had to come out of his pocket. Well, you're, he's sheltered in place. He couldn't work. And these people were sending him money to help him with his expenses. And so one of the things he did was he sent him a thank you note. And that's the book of Philippians. Now, he talks about a whole bunch of wonderful things in the book of Philippians, but finally at the very end, he gets around to saying, hey, thank you so much for sending that money. But then he makes it clear, I want you to know, I really and truly appreciate that money, but what really excites me about it is that you guys gave, and he totally believed what Jesus said. It's more blessed to give than to receive. It, it is more blessed for, for a person of God to give rather than to get. And when he saw that these Philippians had given to him, I mean, he was just so excited because they were going to be blessed. And so he made that really clear. It wasn't that he was excited about getting to move into a bigger and better place, being able to shop for better groceries or get better takeout. He was so excited because these people had given and they were going to be blessed. And the reason he was able to have this perspective was because of what he said in chapter 4, verses 11 through 13. He said, I want you to know, my friends, I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low. I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. In fact, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So you remember why I even had us go to this passage? I was, we, we were trying to answer the question, how was the Apostle Paul, this mover, this shaker, this road warrior who traveled the Roman Empire preaching Christ, how was he doing being stuck in a, a, a house sheltered in place for two whole years? Well, I think you can see the answer was he did pretty well. He was happy. Was it his preferred way to live? I can pretty well assert, uh, assure you it wasn't. He liked to travel. A different bed every night, he slept well that way. Staying in one place, that's boring being settled, being in a rut. I mean, that some of us might like that. The Apostle Paul didn't like it. His lifestyle was totally different. But do you see that, what he said there? Man, he was rejoicing in this new situation that God had given him. Oh, it wasn't what he preferred, but he could handle it. In fact, he could handle it really well. He was content. And he gave God all the credit. I do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, I think for the Apostle Paul, he provides us this example, this model of, of what really and truly matters in these kinds of situations. And, and I think he gives us some great pointers on how we can do this situation really well as the people of God. Here's one of the things I think that is, is so important. I think the Apostle Paul recognized a truth that was just essential. And that truth that he recognized is that you can do any and everything God wants you to do, no matter what the circumstance. See, remember back in the book of Acts? What's going on? Paul is explaining the kingdom of God to people. He is preaching Christ to people. He's compelling people to trust Christ. Did he enjoy staying in the same house all the time? Would he have preferred to go from Ephesus to Colossae to Philippi to Thessalonica to Berea to this other town? Sure, he would have preferred that. But the thing he really and truly wanted to do was what God wanted him to do. And he realized that doing what God really wanted him to do was not being a road warrior. It was being someone who was passionate about this mission that God had placed him here on earth to do, to fulfill. You can do any and everything God wants you to do right now. And that's true for me. 
That's true for you. This may not be how we want to live, but you know what? I can still do all the things that God has called me to do. I just have to do them in a little different way, just like the Apostle Paul had to do them in a little different way. I can still love my wife, show my love to, to my wife, and, and be the, the Christ-like husband that I should be, even when we're sheltered in place. I can still lead my family. I can still disciple my kids. I can still reach out to people and encourage them, even in this situation. I mean, okay, we're right at the start of shelter in place, whatever that's going to look like for us here in Texarkana. But the truth of the matter is, whatever it pans out to be, my happiness, my, your happiness, it isn't dependent upon that. Here's one more thing I want to share with you. We can recognize, we need to remember, but you know what? We can also rejoice. You know why? Because I can count on God to give me everything I need. Remember what the Apostle Paul said at the very end of that discussion? Earlier I was referring to verses 11, 12, and 13. When you get to the very end of that little section, he said, my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory. You know what? I may be only able to buy one dozen eggs, but God is going to give me everything I need, and he's going to give you everything you need. Remember what Jesus said at the end of the Sermon on the Mount? He said, hey, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things, they'll take care of themselves. You and I, uh, our happiness, our contentment, our deep-seated fulfillment, it's not dependent upon our circumstances. It's not dependent upon how well we're handling the coronavirus. It really and truly is dependent upon are we working in the will of God with a good attitude, with a healthy attitude. The Apostle Paul did that. And you know what? You and I can do that. Let me just pray for us. Father, I thank you so much for the privilege of being able to just spend a couple minutes thinking deeply about a truth that I think is so pertinent to our specific situation. Father, I do pray that you would help us to adjust to this new normal. And even though there might be another new normal in a couple of weeks, we can adjust to that one too, just like we need to adjust to this one. Father, we don't need to be frustrated. We don't need to be fearful. We can have that peace and joy and contentment even in this new normal because you're supplying all of our needs. I pray, Father, you'd help us to find that center of doing what you want us to do in this situation. We feel so limited, but Father, we're not limited from doing your will. And I thank you for that. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, thank you so much for spending a couple moments with us. I trust it's been encouraging. Uh, we are here to help. We absolutely love you. We are so privileged that uh, you are part of our church. And I just hope that as this week progresses on, that God blesses. And if you have any needs, please uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us. I want to encourage you to join into the little Zoom meeting we're going to do Wednesday night. Details are on the church website, fellowshipbible.net. Click over to the online page and you can find all the links you need. God bless you. Have an incredible week.